My name is D. Period Shane Andrews, and the D stands for DeVoe, it's a family name. My father is considered the greatest bass fisherman of all time. He got forgotten along the way, so I got inspired with a friend of mine to co-author a book to uh, describe my dad's life, as well as the history of professional bass fishing and how it all got started. And what we did was I got on the phone and I would just call people, bass clubs, different things like Rotary and, and Lions Club and whoever would let us speak at all. And then we would have to go and speak. Well, my co-author Jeremy Miller uh, was never able to attend, so it was all on me. And I talked Dad into letting me introduce him because every time we went someplace, people would wonder who Glenn Andrews was. Well, I only had maybe 30 seconds to make that introduction every time. So what happened was I would get up and I would just simply say this. My name is DeVoe Shane Andrews and I'm the son of Glenn Andrews. He was three-time Missouri State Champion, 1962, 1963, 1964. He was 1965 Arkansas State Champion. He was twice runner-up world champion and he was two-time world champion very first back-to-back -back world champion, 1965, 1966. And it didn't take but a couple of seconds after that before people's attention was steered towards the podium. And all I had to do was then say, I'd like for everybody to welcome my father, Glenn Andrews, poss possibly the greatest bass fisherman of all time. Everybody give him a hand. And that's how I would introduce my father when we would go to speaking engagements. What resulted from that was by the time I, I got done with them and by the time Dad got done with them, putting the finished touches on them, we would be able to sell 50% of the audience our books almost every single time. My dad was named Earl Andrews, and everybody in the whole area knew Earl Andrews. Whether he was famous or notorious, I'm not real sure, but he was a coon hunter. He brought, brought coon hides and lead heel every Saturday for most of my life. And, I spent many hours cleaning those coon hides up and getting them ready for resale. But we lived on a farm six miles out of Lady Hill, and I had four sisters and two brothers. And I uh, didn't do too well in school because I, I spent more, more time out putting crops in and taking crops out than I did in the classroom. And after, I don't know, I guess 12 or 13 or 14 years, I'm not real sure, they, they told me I was too old to play basketball and they gave me a diploma and told me I graduated. Working on the farm, I graduated, I stayed at home and helped dad on the farm and stuff. And I, was, I finished a lot with Bill Dorton III, he was my best friend. His, his brother took off to, to learn to preach and, and my brother took off in the military for, for four years. So that left my neighbor, Billy Dorton and I, to, to, to be, do all the running around together and so forth and, until he got got shot by an accident in 19, when he was 23 years old. But we got to float the river, White River, every, every weekend if we get all the hay in the barn by Saturday at noon, well, Dad or Bill One would put us in up at the mouth of the, of the, of the Bear Creek and we'd float to the horseshoe bend and camp out and then the other dad would pick us up down at the Old Ravy Ferry. I don't know if you ever heard of the old Lady Furry or not, but anyway, <laughs> that was down there where, where the Lady Hill Boat Dock is now. But anyway, after a little while at home, uh, the guy that owned the, the boat dock down there, and he had a small office and, and about a dozen boats and stuff showed up at my house. And uh, he said he wanted to, uh, he's looking for some guides. He needed three guides for tomorrow for a party coming out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I, Dad, your dad told me you was a good boat paddler. I said, well, I don't know about that, but, but I will take one of them out. So that was the beginning of my guide career. But uh, as far as the, my mom and dad, you know, they're, they're gone now, of course. And, and uh, dad was quite a coon hunter. Uh, I had a coon hunt with him many, many nights, all night long. Next morning, I had to go milk the cows before I went to school. <laughs> but anyway, I, he wanted me to go with him because, because he couldn't hit the side of the barn with his pistol that I, 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 I got for him. And he was a, he was a Smith and Weston made on a K4 frame, a six-shooter. And 
and it was I was just dead idea with it because the sights lined up real good and etc. He wanted me to go to shoot the tunes out and take care of some of the equipment. That's the only reason he wanted me to go. I, I was six foot two, but I'd have been about seven foot if he hadn't walked my legs off back in the days. <laughs> but but every time he'd come to the house there one winter after the season was closed or pretty much was done. He'd always skin those coons and stretch them out real good and dry them out, hang them up in the old smokehouse out there. And so everybody come there, he had to go show them his coon hides. He had 55 of them in there that particular time. And he had 11 over, over, over one side. And he said, now, them 11 right there, Glenn, hit right between the eyes. You can see the hole in the hide there. <laughs> so, so anyway, we did have a lot of fun coon hunting back them days. And there was a lot of other people did the same thing. The, the coon hides would bring just about enough to pay for the gas and the carbide light fuel. That was about it. But Dad made his money on coon dogs. He bought dogs all over four counties, gone all the time. He knew how to find a good coon dog, and he'd buy a good coon dog for $25 and ship it into Illinois or Nebraska or Iowa, somewhere up there, and get 100 for it. So he made a lot of money buying and selling coon dogs over the years. Anyway, those are good old days, good old days. And right now I'm, I'm just trying to deal with a world that's trying to pass me by.